Matt's uh, proposal. No, I'm going to present uh, something and of course there's audio. Uh, so I'm going to do something that you can present with me. Um, so I hope it will be a good time for all of you because it's, I'm a PhD student for a couple of months now and I'm presenting basically my, uh, no, my research proposal so far. So I'm also interested in uh, getting any kind of comments or ideas or guidelines on this, I guess, uh, or uh, just overall uh, remarks. So um, there won't be any <coughs> guitar playing. Uh, I think uh, it's better for your ears uh, that I don't uh, take <laughs> try, give it give a try. So, uh, so my name is Louis. I'm a PhD student under uh, Mark and Tuff, and uh, I'm doing a project in collaboration with ING. Dipole so far is making gentle to behave uh, with subtitle adaptation under uh, understandable constraints. So this is what I'm going to be talking about a bit of the background, so motivation, business context, uh, problem statement, and then some possible directions and challenges. And that's uh, all there is to say so far. So uh, now, so um, the relevance. So um, we're seeing lots more uh, adaptive agents that are becoming more pervasive. So Search, uh, that, uh, yeah, search results being more tailored, more personalized, in pricing, in investment portfolio management, that kind of stuff. There's lots of uh, adaptation and personalization going on. Uh, also in marketing, customer service, and uh, yes, autonomous vehicles that, that, that are happening nowadays. And of course, uh, we have healthcare uh, uh, being targeted at the moment. Um, so, Kind of uh, statement, but so this increased pervasiveness comes with some increased responsibilities, right? So, uh, yeah, if you are going into these new areas, then you also have to meet the uh, quality standards there. Uh, however, uh, adaptation includes to some extent uh, uh, some trial and error and or civil humanity, uh, so to speak. It's a bit vague, but uh, uh, intentionally left vague to get across the message. Um, but so this 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 kind of uh, trial and error or civil humanity uh, so makes some people nervous. Uh, so there's some societal concerns, I guess, about privacy. Uh, AI being used as a weapon. Uh, okay, so some people are worried that uh, some uncontrollable super intelligence will uh, arise somehow. Um, and then there's worries about uh, increasing Inequality. Um, well, but there's also been some resp responses from the academic community. Um, so, for example, we had the responsible data science meetup here. And that's maybe not a very big uh, thing to do, but it uh, makes it more to illustrate that uh, these concerns are indeed being taken seriously. Um, there's the Open AI Future of Life Institute to try to democratize uh, AI. Uh, there's people working on actual formulation of very concrete problems in AI to solve in safety in AI. And um, there's people attempting to yeah, open up new new areas, such as uh, learning human values from human behavior or um, yeah, adapting algorithms that, that, that are yeah, actually maybe adapting a very strange word there, but actually changing up the algorithm to include some, some measure of Fairness. Um, so, so um, yeah, this is a bit what's going on. However, we we do see that actually making these adaptive agents behave is quite hard. So, you you can see some some, some early attempts where uh, constraints on the behavior are encoded into the objective function for the for the agent. This has some issues. For example, you need to have very particular knowledge about how this uh, agent behaves, how it's uh, yeah, the mathematical formulation of its, uh, of its goal, for example. So you really need to be a technical expert, so to say, so to, to, to be able to uh, get your constraints in. Right? So, and uh, for some for some part of the problems, this is, this is okay. But for others, uh, yeah, it's not really, uh, it's not really feasible to, to change up this objective function. And also, not always, it's not always clear um, what is the exact result of this change of the objective function. Um, right. <laughs> I think, yeah, okay, yeah. 
doesn't so, help. So um, also learning uh, values uh, from users can help also has some issues. For example, um, um, people might have different values, right? So who to learn from to start with. Um, uh, also, learning values besides having some other adaptation uh, adaptation goal is actually making the learning uh, the learning task harder. So yeah, this might not be the best solution. Um, we have a representation gap where actually when we people talk about what we find normal behavior is completely different from what some uh, agent might be uh, use, using to represent this behavior. Right? So you can have a, an agent that has uh, a representation of behavior on actuator level, so maybe controlling motors or doing some very fine-grained stuff. And it's very hard to specify normal behavior or uh, yeah, uh, like intended behavior on that level. Um, OK, so this was already mentioned, I think. Uh, so you can have different uh, notions of behavior. Um, then you can have, uh, yeah, then the notion of actually what, what it means to behave can change over time. So what do you do then? And so maybe society uh, now all of a sudden thinks uh, something is not uh, well desired of this agent anymore. How can you change its behavior quickly? Um, so what does that mean also for its, the, the behavior it has learned? Does it have to relearn it then? Or does it have to throw out all, everything it has learned? So how to handle this, these situations? Is, not really clear yet. Um, and finally, so how is learning, uh, the learning itself, uh, impacted from these constraints, right? So does learning get easier, maybe, because there's simply some some parts of the behavior space that are not not included in the learning task anymore, or maybe it's harder because uh, yeah, some some uh, some different uh, yeah, some different uh, combinations of of behavior. Yeah, cannot be tried anymore, may not be tried anymore, uh, even though they may, they may have elements of them, uh, yeah, even, of, uh, even though some elements of the, that behavior might be quite good, but maybe as a whole they're not desirable. Uh, so these are some, some, some components here. Now this is a big, too big of a problem to, to start solving for me on my own in, in uh, four years. So, um, um, Luckily, this is a project in collaboration with IMG. So uh, this is um, some, some application domain which is highly regulated. And we know some other regulate, regulated domains. Uh, uh, so uh, for example, again, healthcare. Um, and we've seen that normative documents actually in these domains and normative reasoning can be, can be automated to some extent. So maybe we can use this uh, to uh, make the, these, these problems we've seen a little bit easier and maybe eliminate some uh, and see for the remaining uh, problems, uh, see what, what happens. So, um, okay, so learning the human value, values is not really necessary anymore because they are already encoded in the, uh, in, in the normative documents. There is some single, uh, somewhat clearly defined notion of behaving, right? This is, uh, okay, this is uh, something people might argue about, but, um, at least there is some definition of what the, the agent should or should not do. Uh, it is interpretable by human uh, experts, so legal experts that is, not per se experts on uh, yeah, making some adaptive agents. And um, so we have some remaining problems, so we have some representation gaps still. And we still don't know the impacts of these constraints on the uh, learning. Uh, so this was a collaboration with IG. I'll give a short introduction on what is IG for people who don't know. It's a Dutch multinational bank, and here are some stats. And uh, yeah, they have some ideas on what's going to happen to banking. Um, and they think that uh, actually uh, people will be able to switch uh, switch banks more easily in the future. So, uh, that's also probably what people will want. Uh, so that means that uh, banking products are becoming more uh, commoditized. So uh, you don't really care anymore about who is exactly providing this document, but you will just switch based on price. Uh, kind of, uh, that's kind of the idea. However, they believe that if you have some 
differentiating, uh, and that's a highly personalized and digital uh, customer experience that will actually win in this market. And they even will go as far as to say that um, maybe offering the banking products is not even an interesting business anymore, but it's actually being the, 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 the interface between customers and banking products that's, that is the most interesting thing in, in, in banking in the future. Right, so this is also where the business uh, things come in, the business link comes in. And then the slogan, a uh, technology company uh, with a banking license, that's what they are aiming to become, or I think they are becoming. Um, but of course, the financial industry is highly regulated um, to protect customers, and uh, yeah, because uh, yeah, bankers have actually shown in the past that it's necessary to, uh, to uh, have some regulations. Um, and these regulate, uh, regulations are, have some, some hierarchy in them. Uh, by which I mean there's, for example, ING internal regulations right, for, for uh, specific companies. Um, there are national reg regulations, so for example, Dutch law. Uh, European regulations from the European Central Bank or the European uh, uh, Committee. And then there's also some global uh, regulations or uh, financial laws. Um, then there are various different regulatory bodies that impose um, constraints on uh, what, what banks can do. For example, um, some are more about uh, risk that a bank has when lending out money. For example, uh, yeah, you cannot lend out money that uh, uh, you cannot lend out uh, more money than you have to some extent, right? So uh, you have they have to have some cash reserves, but other uh, Regulatory constraints are completely different, and for, for example, handle are more to do with um, uh, protecting customers. So, um, for example, it's not it's not allowed to um, yeah, to, to uh, I don't know um, yeah, to to try and sell some banking product that is that is uh, not uh, in line with somebody's risk appetite. For example, so these are two things that are completely different and uh, have completely different structure and format, but have to be taken into account still. And um, then there's, uh, so the, the kind of constraints are, are dispersed, so there's not really a single rule set or something like that for how bankers should behave. Um, so, and so that's to, to illustrate how important these regulations are, um, the reporting on compliance to these rules only costs about 150 million euros per year in Europe. So basically everything that happens within a bank should pass these compliance uh, laws. So um, if we look at uh, how, how, how could we get this personalization that, that this uh, bank wants, that we think is, can be an interesting uh, kind of uh, thing for adaptive systems. Uh, we have a look at reinforcement learning, um, and I will, uh, yeah, I will try to explain why. Uh, but first let me uh, look at the kind of reinforcement learning paradigm. It's a machine learning um, yeah, kind of problem family um, in which there's an agent that can perform actions uh, onto some environment, um, and it can then read the state of this environment via some sensors, and um, yeah, then decide to perform next actions. Um, how does it do this, or how does it decide? It's based on the reward that it also extracts from the environment. And uh, the notion of time is very important, so uh, everything is subscripted by this P, uh, or P plus one, because um, uh, it's not about doing the best action at this point in time, but uh, making a sequence of actions that are actually uh, result in a cumulative um, maximal reward. So if we if we view the environment actually as a person, then we basically have this, this personalization. Um, and obviously, if you are going to perform some action on this human, for example, uh, yeah, I don't know, um, try to recommend some banking product or maybe help them uh, making a financial decision, then uh, yeah, you, 
we obviously have to put some constraints on the, uh, on the actions to ensure the, the safety of the behavior. So um, we want non-reinforcement learning experts to be able to uh, express these constraints, right? So we want legal people, financial people to be able to understand what this agent is doing and what it cannot do. Um, so we need some kind of knowledge representation and reasoning tools to uh, express these constraints. And yeah, we need a representation that, that builds trust and allows for proofs to be uh, made on this uh, behavior of this agent. So this is the, basically the main problem statement. Um, so how to represent and reason about these normative documents, uh, how to incorporate uh, these um, symbolic constraints into reinforcement learning algorithms, and in an application um, of an adaptive personal system. Um, so in the banking domain, you can think of this as a jumbo. Um, so now some, some challenges. Some challenges. So uh, for knowledge representation and reasoning on uh, non the documents, we have some, some um, yeah, model checking uh, of processes uh, that, 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 that can be done. Right, so uh, you remember this 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 um, sequential notion of actions. Um, so you can see this as a process process which you can, for example, model using uh, business process modeling of tools or computer science modeling. And then you can maybe um, uh, use some uh, some uh, some specific logics to, to to do some checks on these models. So that's a possible way to solve this. And that's also what people have been doing. Um, so that might be something for me to, to check. Um, then there are modal uh, geontic logics that are more to do with actually the kind of philosophical um, um, uh, yeah, angle, and that try to formalize legal reasoning. Uh, and then there are also legal ontologies. Uh, and so in the medical domain, we also have uh, clinical guideline ontologies. Uh, and maybe the approach taken there is also applicable to what, what is happening in this, uh, in this um, uh, for these adaptive chatbots. Um, so for, for bridging the representation gap, um, so it's a chatbot application, so hard coding all utterances is principle possible, and I guess that's what I will start out with. Uh, but that that kind of limits the kind of adaptation that, that can happen, because I mean, that's, then the chatbot can only select different uh, utterances and, and kind of make uh, make those personalized, but that's maybe not the most interesting kind of adaptation. So this finding this uh, yeah, boundary between uh, adaptation and, and Constraints is uh, also one of the one of the challenges, uh, and so one of the things that could be interesting is will the constraints uh, actually bound the granularity of things to be learned? Right. So if you look at maybe you can have a look at maybe you can define a chatbot that actually starts to learn on a character level, so to speak. Uh, but obviously, this makes the representation gap a lot bigger than if you have predefined utterances. Um, so that's also one of the things that I will, I guess, uh, have to face. Um, then, what kind of guarantees do we want to give on, on behaving uh, of this, of this chatbot? So, how, uh, to what extent does uncertainty in the environment, so in the, in the user, in the person, um, impact the guarantees that we can give? So if we can, um, Perform actions but are unsure of it, the exact outcomes, then it might be very, this might become very hard. Um, and indeed, it is still an open question: what, what kind of guarantees are required? Even so, do we want to kind of forbid uh, specific actions uh, in specific uh, states of the user, uh, or do we want to maybe forbid a region of the state phase? So we don't want the user to end up in some state. Um, or maybe we 
maybe this is not enough, and uh, because of um, yeah, um, uh, uncertainty in, in, in how the user will respond, we have to actually um, uh, kind of constrain on the controller level to make sure that actually the, the, the agent prevents the user from uh, so, so being even more uh, yeah, selective in, in what kind of actions are allowed and making sure it keeps away from, from, from the uh, unsafe States. Uh, so this is also one challenge, and then, then of course, there's the impact of the constraints on the learning. So, big question would be for me: Will constraints make learning uh, uh, learning tasks easier or harder, or maybe uh, indeterminate, but something in between? So, um, if we have some changes to the constraints, because, for example, new law or uh, new uh, yeah, new set of norms. In the, uh, in the society, how, how, how does this uh, impact the learner? Um, are there maybe some specific reinforcement learning algorithms uh, specifically suitable for, uh, for this, these constraints, or maybe <laughs> we cannot constrain uh, all of them? Uh, and also the computational complexity of learning on the constraints uh, will probably be a big issue because of the large number of possibilities that this uh, that, the, that these uh, uh, yeah, kind of algorithms consider in the first place. So this will also be uh, yeah, one of the challenges. Uh, and so I made a planning. I don't know who to talk about it, but if there's questions about this, we can maybe uh, have a look. So, so thanks all. And uh, yeah, this was my uh, presentation. Thanks. Very simple example, something like Alpha Go Zero. Um, the way they encode the rules of Go, which is sort of like a yeah. set of rules, is just by putting it in the loss function. So if the yeah. agent breaks the rules, yeah. it dies, mm -hmm. and then it just learns the rules. Is which is very generic and just no. sense. Is, is that acceptable for your project, or is this doesn't that does that just provide um, no. guarantee? Also, the, the the thing with these rules of Go is that it so it might, right? So that's a bit of a, maybe not the question, but the answer you were looking for, but oh. it might, because I think if, if in the end, if the probability of uh, uh, yeah, doing something illegal, so to speak, um, becomes small enough, then, then it's probably fine, because all risk is kind of quantified in, in, in these terms. So yeah, um, it's not, uh, it doesn't have to be 100% uh, yeah, proof okay. that, that it will be correct. But, uh, thing with this, this um, so by by simply making the reward zero in these uh, in these cases that that might be um, yeah that might might be useful if these if these uh, if these rules of the game are fixed, mm -hmm. but this is not realistic in, uh, in in the real world where people yeah where specific kind of rules can change over time. I see. And uh, so that's what I mean by having to relearn uh, maybe. You could do both at the same time, I suppose. If you feed the rules into the agent inside information and no. then kill it when it no. breaks the rules, no. then you could change the rules of both and then um, no. hopefully the, uh, the agent can then no. respond to the new rules. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks. Do I understand correctly that ultimately this agent will be talking to customers? Yes. And then. Yeah. Advising them to, to, with respect to their needs. Yeah. So I find it a bit difficult to, to see how, um, let's say, adaptation is is valuable or worthwhile in this, this context. Yeah. So adaptation seems good if, for example, you're buying records yeah. or which movies do you like, etc. Mm -hmm. Because there are sort of small variations in what you can do. Yeah. Whereas with the bank, it seems more like there's these big products. Mm -hmm. That you need every four years, every five years, yeah. and then it's more like really understanding them mm -hmm. than, let's say, adapting to your particular preferences. So the need would be more to explain and mm -hmm. really see what you know and don't know, and and take your own, as opposed to adapting to preferences. So, yeah. so I would like to see a really compelling example that yeah. you're looking to do about preferences here. Yeah. So I think um, the the way this this uh, 
I think this is indeed a very valid uh, point, very, very valid argument, so thanks. So I think it, where the, the, the way to handle this is um, to see how, how we model the environment, so basically the user. Uh, do we take one specific user at a time as the environment, and are we going to learn for a specific user? For example, that's what happens when you, uh, when, uh, yeah, that's, that's what might happen, I don't know, uh, that's what might happen if you're using Spotify. It, it, it actually tries to make a specific recommendation for you. Um, but you can also model maybe uh, the environment not as one single person, but actually as a group of persons. For example, more, uh, yeah, people, maybe young people, uh, people, yeah, PhD students, uh, versus uh, uh, people that are a bit older. And then if you get a question about mortgages, then actually they might have different information needs. Uh, and uh, so that's where personalization can, can, can happen actually at a group level. So for example, if, if I were to ask a question about a mortgage, then it's probably more uh, likely that I'm interested in actually signing up for one, rather than trying to change it, or trying to maybe make additional uh, payments or something like that. Sure. And, and this is kind of the, yeah. So the fair, I see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. But still, I have the impression that if it's about the progress that the bank has to offer, then it's a very limited set. So there's not so much to adapt to, like, like three or four uh, tick boxes to check, and then, you know, okay, it's about a mortgage. Yeah. And then somebody who needs to know everything about the mortgage. Mm -hmm. And it's more about explain what's in there as opposed to adapting to personal needs. So personal needs would, might, would make sense, for example, if you say, okay, the dialogue, yeah. the way you want to communicate with the person, yeah. somebody wants to be a script, somebody mm -hmm. wants to have more attention, or, I mean, but the way you speak, okay, there could be adaptation. Yeah. Means that yeah. might be good. But if it's about the products, I don't see why adaptation would be the big thing, because there's not so many choices, right? Yeah, okay. Set, yeah. It's more about explaining things. 